The American Indian Movement, also formerly known as one of the top 50 terrorist groups in the United States, was founded by Dennis Banks and Clyde Belcourt in the summer of 1968 after calling a meeting of 200 natives in the area to discuss their restraining issues and how to take care of their own destiny. And out of that determination, the American Indian Movement was born. The organization established job training, education programs, and youth centers, forced the government to improve public housing for natives and set up schools for more accurate education of their culture. Pictured here is one of the founders, Dennis Banks, along with the member Carter Camp at a Wounded Knee protest. Dennis Banks was born in 1937 of the Ojibwe tribe in Leech Lake, Minnesota. He was removed from his home at an early age and placed in boarding schools that didn't allow languages besides English to be spoken since they were ran by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. When he grew up after serving some time in the military, he got into trouble with the law and was eventually jailed for burglary. He was released from prison in 1968 and helped found the American Indian Movement, also known as AIM. Born shortly after in 1939 is our other founder, Clyde Belcourt, also of the Ojibwe tribe. He grew up in a poor family and, like Dennis, wasn't really into school, being that if and when Native Americans were talked about by their teachers or in their books, they were referred to as savages or killers. This led to him dropping out at an early age, and after quitting school and failing to find work, he became involved in burglaries and robberies and wound up in prison. After a while, he had lost hope and attempted to starve himself to death in prison until a fellow inmate brought him a book dealing with his Ojibwe history. This filled him with hope and he began to relay the information to other inmates, technically meaning the first real Indian studies program happened in prison. After his release, he and Dennis founded AIM in 1968. Another one of their early acts as an organization was creating the K-12 Heart of the Earth Survival School in 1971 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It began as an alternative school in the 70s and turned into a charter school in 1999. Here is a picture from 2001 when it was still successfully operating. However, when the school no longer had sponsors or support, the 250 students enrolled in the school had to say goodbye due to a lack of sponsorship and support to continue their education. However, they did have many successes as a group, like how just after five weeks of the patrol being started, no natives have been arrested, a dramatic reduction of the five to six arrests reported per day. A year later, AIM leaders claimed that 22 consecutive weeks had passed without any arrested American Indians. AIM patrol was also assisting their community by being peacemakers, de-escalating community violence like preventing fights and also being security for any type of gatherings, from powwows to school dances and basketball games, and encouraged youth not to engage in drug or alcohol use. But nothing good lasts forever. During the infamous Wounded Knee protests, when FBI agents were dispatched to remove AIM occupiers, a standoff took place. Throughout the 71-day-long protest, two people were killed, 12 wounded, and 1,200 natives overall were arrested. However, from this pain and suffering brought more light into their group. Eight months after the protest, AIM leaders were tried in court and found not guilty of any wrongdoings. Relocation of Indians to Urban Areas, BIA Policy 1954 Act. This act was made to assimilate Indian people into American society, and they felt the most effective and efficient way to do so was to relocate Indians to cities with the promise of jobs and a better life. In reality, what had happened was that many Indian people became disconnected with their home communities, the promised jobs did not exist, and they were stranded in cities like Oakland, California, California, Cleveland, Ohio, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, with no support network. This act is responsible for the dramatic rise in the urban Indian population across the country. Pictured here are some more familiar faces like Muhammad Ali and Stevie Wonder, along with some of our AIM members. Solidarity between African Americans and Native Americans grew with the Black Power movement of the 1970s, whose goals were closer to the nationalism embraced by AIM activists. Comparing this movement with the Black Panther movement, we see police brutality of natives in Minneapolis was notorious in 1968, as with the police brutality of African Americans in Oakland. Seeing they were going through similar struggles, AIM was inspired to model its patrols of the police after the Panther Party. AIM also worked hard to create free breakfast programs, free legal help, and health clinics in the same way the Panthers did, and both AIM and the BPP quickly became national organizations with chapters all across the U.S. To this day, AIM is still alive. Here is a current picture of the Southern California chapter. They are still very active in their communities and youth lives to increase public awareness of other indigenous movements. Along with repeatedly bringing successful suit against the U.S. government protecting the rights of nations in treaties, sovereignty, U.S. constitution, and laws. 
AIM also currently has a website with podcasts of current events and give updates on their most significant members like Leonard Peltier and his case, also a timeline of important history. If you'd like to learn more about who AIM is, there is a link in the description along with other sources we use to create this digital artwork of Native American history for you. Thank you.